place I stand before the throne. of God's word. We rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Every critical spirit be stilled in Jesus' name. To Christ be the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Praise God. Turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, are you full of it? Are you full of? Praise the Lord. Are you full of? Joy. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Jesus is making the statement, these things I have spoken so that my joy may remain in you and your joy be made full. Praise God. A disciple experiences the joy of the Lord as he continues to abide in him. Abide in me and let my words abide in you. Praise God. The presence of Christ in us is the reason, the cause, and the source of abundance in our lives. Praise God. Regardless of what it is, 
It's, whether it is abundant life, praise God. Abundant joy, it is the presence of Christ in our life that makes the difference. In the original, the text may read like this, that my joy may remain, that my joy in you may remain. Praise God. Christ is talking about a life where we abide in Him and His, and His Word abide in us. And this brings forth an abundance of life, abundance of fruit in our lives. Praise God. A fruitful Christian, a faithful Christian is a reason and a cause for God to rejoice over them. Praise God. We have to be fruitful and we have to be faithful. That becomes the cause or the reason for God to rejoice over us. Praise God. God expects within us a momentum. He is not looking for a life that is stagnant and dormant and still, but rather a life in Christ and the word in him in us will bring forth a supernatural growth and change and transformation in our lives. Praise God. Here Christ is saying, if my joy remain in you, praise God, your joy may be full. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, there is a connection. God wants us to become people who are full of, full of joy. Praise God. Having a name joy does not bring joy in us. Praise God. What brings joy in us is what? Christ in us. Praise God. If my joy remain in you, Praise God, your joy can be Why? Because Christ is the source. He is the fountain. Praise God. He is the fountain of life which brings forth abundance and eternal life. He is the fountain of joy which brings in fullness of joy or perfection of joy. He is the prince of peace that allows us to experience peace in every season of our lives. So it is his presence in us that brings forth a supernatural abundance in us. Praise God. Hallelujah. When you look at the prior verse and you can, when you connect it and understand the context of it, Christ talks about, as the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Praise God. I love you. He says, I love you. But you have to do what? You have to do what? Remain, abide in that love. And he wants no ambiguity there. He makes it clear. How can you abide in that love? Remain in that love? Christ makes it very clear. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Praise God. Hallelujah. In other words... If we want to experience that fullness, that is what? There has to be a living connection with Him. Praise God. There is the element of obedience to His voice, obedience to His command, which brings forth the fullness that He talks about. Praise God. That your joy might be full. Not only you might be full of joy, but your joy in me and my love in you may continue to grow. There is a constant growth. There is a constant, uh, there is a constant springing up which brings forth fullness and an overflowing experience. Praise God. 
we are chosen to experience joy. Praise God. We are chosen to experience joy. Imagine the joy of a beginning of Christian life. How many of you guys remember the time that you became a Christian? You became born again. Do you remember the, the beginning life experience? You know how joyful you were? Do you remember it? The intensity of joy because of the freshness of life that has just started. The day that you were born again, the intensity, the bubbling of joy inside made you to see things differently. Praise God. The hope within you is rekindled with a new flare, with a new radiating experience. There is joy. Praise God. And there is absence of something as well. Absence of the knowledge of the conflict and the hurdles that wait in Christian life. Praise God. Has no clue. Praise God. Remember the joy? I don't know how many of you guys remember that. You know, when I used to work, we used to have a Bible study. And we had a group where we would meet together early in the morning and I have a Bible study. And there were people from all walks people from the management, people from the workforce, and everybody was together. And there were these guys who were so exuberant. I remember there was this brother who would, he could not keep his foot down. He used to like jump like this. He says, oh, my brother. There was another fellow who was just born again. He used to walk like this, big Bible. He used to walk like this. And he used to like. And there were the seasoned Christians. You know, couldn't take it. They couldn't take this exuberance. You know, something within these guys were like bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. And the other guys who've been in, in, in this thing for some time, you know, look, and one of the guys, you know, one of those brothers, they looked at me and said, looking at this new born again believer, he looked and he made a statement like this he must be the new kid on the block. I didn't say nothing, you know, I just kept quiet. But he couldn't stop it. He told his brother, he says, calm down, man, calm down. The other guy said, what do you mean, calm down? God has done so much good in my life, I can't contain it. He says, I know, I know, I know, we've been all through this, you know, we've been all through this, we know what it is. You know, after some times, you're going to calm down. That shocked him. He came up to me and he asked, this true? I said, what is true? Is this true what he's saying? I said, what? Am I going to be like him? I said, it's your choice. Whether you want to be like him or whether you want to be the way that you are. Isn't it true that the beginning fervor, the beginning love affair with the Lord, the beginning joy, the bubbling of joy as you remained in him, as the word remained in you, praise God, exuberance that came out of you over the course of time, it has been whatever you want. Some call it seasoned Christians. Some call it experienced Christians. Some call it the more mature. Praise God. Well, with time, yes. We know how to what? Handle emotions, but that should not take the spark out of it. Let me ask you, has the spark gone out of you? Praise God. The other day in Two Lawrence, they found out that the heat was now running. And our brothers checked up and they said the tank is full of oil. What's gone? The spark is what? Snuffed. Praise God. Do you 
you still have the spark in you. Right? Yeah. The beginning joy. Has to be dampened. George Muller never would go to preach before he made sure that the joy of the Lord was his strength. Praise God. John Wesley, before he was converted, he saw the Moravian brothers. The joy that erupted in them. And that was a reason for the con conversion that took place in their lives. Praise God. Spurgeon said it like this. Every time you talk about heaven, your face should gleam. They ought to see that glow on your face. And every time you speak about hell. It should be as usual. Your face should be as normal as you are. What are we talking about? We're talking about the joy on the inside. The joy that is inside is different. We are not talking about happiness. Happiness is based on happenings. Happiness is based on circumstances. Happiness is based on what's going around you. But the joy that God has put within you is based on your connection with him. And he wants you to experience the fullness of joy. Let me ask you. The joy tank in you. Is it full? Is it half empty? Or has it gone dry? Praise God. What can cause joy in us? Look what the psalmist says. Psalm 30, verse 11 and 12. Read it. Put it up. Psalm 30, 11 and 12. Yes. Thou hast turned my mourning into dancing. Thou hast put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. And the version says, you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and you have put on me with joy. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, when we think about what has transpired in our lives, praise God. Hallelujah. What has happened, what God has done for us, he has changed the course of our destiny. The psalmist says, he has picked us out of the miry clay, put our feet on the rock to stay. He has made our going steady. He has given us a new song in our mouth. Praise be unto our God. The psalmist says, you have turned my mourning, my wailing into dancing. In other words, there is a change in my status. I was gloomy, but you have brought me into glory. I was in mourning, but you changed the situation. I'm dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and you have put on, praise God, joy upon me. And so he's going to say is what he's saying. To the end that, that my glory may sing praise to thee. Praise God. Who has done it? He's saying, the Lord, you have done this. Therefore, I'm going to do what? I'm going to sing praises to you and will not be silent. Praise God. Oh Lord my God I will give thanks unto thee for ever. Why ever? Why ever? Praise God. God has done a work in us and for us that has changed the very course of our destiny. It has impacted our eternity and therefore there is a reason, a cause for us to brag, to boast and to sing and say thank you Lord. Praise God. Do you have a reason this morning? Praise God. Some years ago, the Presbyterians were having a, a conference in Omaha. Praise God. 
And during the conference, one thing that they gave to all the attendees were balloons filled with helium. You know what does that do? What does that do, girls? What does that do? Let it go, what happens? It falls on the ground? What does that, what happens? Guys, it just pops up, it just goes up. The helium in it takes it what? Up. Everyone was given a balloon with a thread attached to it, helium filled balloon. And they were given the instruction. During the this, during this service, as you're attending the service, anytime you feel joy, what are you supposed to do? Let the balloon go. Let the balloon go. So the conference was going on, the service was going on, and here and there the balloon would just go up. After the service was over, they found that one third of the attendees still were holding to the balloons. They were supposed to let it go when? Huh? As they sit through the service, when they experience joy, they were supposed to let it go. People are still holding on to their balloons. You got to let it. Well, we're not Presbyterian. We are what? We are Pentecostal. We are loud, boys. Huh? We are loud. Praise God. We can, we can, we are, we are, when, when we think about what Christ has done and what he's done for us, we what? What do we do? We just brag. We just praise him. That's what the psalmist is saying. You turn my mourning into dancing. You took the sackcloth off and you put what? Joy. You adorned me with joy. He has adorned us with a garment of salvation. He has adorned us with a garment of praise. He has adorned us with a robe of righteousness. He has adorned us with joy and gladness. And that causes us to praise him. Praise God. I don't need a balloon to let go of what's inside of me. Comes out spontaneously. I want to praise him. Because what he has done for us. Praise God. How many services we come and we're still holding on to it. Praise God. After coming this morning, did you let go? Praise God. I visited a home the other day. One of our homes, and the grandparents were saying, they have a grandchild, is, is, is three. And they were saying, Pastor, you know, in between, he just shouts, Jesus! So I didn't realize the context. So the grandma looked at me and said, Do you realize what he's doing? I said, What? I said, You know, during the service, you shout, Jesus! Joy has to be what? Contagious. Praise God. When you start giving him praise, that dampened spirit guy that's next to you, the spark through you has to what? It has to catch on fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. See, we are, we, we either you could be like a thermometer or a thermostat. A thermometer is what? It is what? It is controlled by what? Circumstances. The reading is based on what? Based on the circumstances. If everybody else is saying, praise God, I'm going to say praise God. Otherwise, what will everybody think? You know, you see the mob of psychology. When people are raising up, some people just raise up because it's just everybody's raising up. Don't do that. Connect with them. And you raise hand. That means something. Connect with them and say, praise God. That means something. Praise God. When you connect with him and give him the glory, that's what, what, that's what really matters. 
We are not called to be thermometer Christians. We are thermostat Christians. We do not change based on what's going around. But we bring the change. Praise God. The joy within us. The life within us vibrates. And it impacts. It sends a ripple effect among the people of God. And it causes glory to come to God. Praise God. Apostle Paul said, I know how to be content in every season. Praise God. That's why he could say, what could he say? Writing, sitting in the prison, writing an epistle, he said, I say what? Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice because life is not controlled by circumstances, but rather the joy of the Lord within causes a euphoria, an excitement, an exuberance, giving praise and glory to God. Praise God. That's why Paul and Silas, the Bible says at midnight, what do they do? Praise God. Bound and stockade, beaten, badly bruised, but that does not stop. That does not snuff out what? The joy within. They erupted in what? They erupted in praise. When? Midnight. Praise God. Paul writing to the Ephesians, he says, do not be drunk with wine, but be Filled with the Spirit. Why? Being filled with the Spirit brings forth what? The, the, the exhibition of joy. What is drunkenness? When you get drunk, what happens? How many of you guys know what happens when you get drunk? Anybody? Come on, somebody should know. Huh? Huh? Lose your sense. That's right. You know, it's, it's, it's a depressant. And what does it do? Makes you forget everything and you are what? You lose your sense and they are what? They are in a different world. Some start singing, some start doing a lot of things. You know, that's why on the day of Pentecost when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, how did the people interpret that? They said what? These guys are what? They are full of it. They are full of what? Full of wine. They said they are drunk. And Paul is saying be drunk with what? Be, do not be drunk with wine, but be drunk with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. When you are filled with the Spirit, praise God, you don't lose control. But the Spirit of God take control of you. The fruit of the Spirit is what? Self-control. And it causes what? Joy to erupt. And it causes exuberance. You break forth into a song. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you going through a midnight experience in your life? Praise God. Like Paul and Silas, they went through a midnight experience. The midnight experience cost them. Praise God. The joy in them not to be snuffed out, but the joy in them started radiating, started to fill, and they started to overflow. Praise God. Some guys, when they go through the midnight experience, they run to get what? They run to the happy hour. You don't need no happy hour. When you are going through a midnight hour, if you are abiding in Christ and his words abide in you, let me tell you, you don't need no happy hour in the midnight hour. My Bible says, as a psalmist says, God gives a song in the night. Praise God. Night seasons are very unique seasons. Praise God. Night seasons have the potential to dampen our spirit. Night seasons have the potential to suppress our joy. Night seasons have the potential to confine you and to contain you. But let me tell you, if you're connected to the source of life, if you're connected to the source of joy, the Bible says in the midnight hour, he will give you a song. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
What are you going through in your life? Praise God. Be deliberate even when you go through midnight hour to give him the praise. Praise God. When the enemy throws a curveball at you, praise God. Rejoice in his presence and show that the curveball is not going to bring you down, but it's going to bring forth praise because the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall be continually be in my mouth. Praise God. A businessman came home. He had lost everything. He came home with the sad news with the, to this family, saying that he has gone bankrupt and he has nothing left. His wife, the family was a Christian. The wife took some things from her home, went to the market, sold it. And that evening, she had a sumptuous meal on the table and they celebrated intentionally, deliberately. Praise God, because the word says, Ah, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Church, what are you going through this morning? Praise God. Are you in a crisis mode? Are you going through financial straits in your life? Are you being pressured from inside and outside? Are you being threatened by pink slips? Praise God. Regardless of what season you are in, let me tell you, it's a season to rejoice. Praise God. When the enemy comes to you taunting, trying to intimidate you, trying to put the cards on the table, saying the report looks bleak for you. Your future looks bleak. The forecast is gloomy. Praise God because you are not controlled by anyone's forecast. It has already been forecasted. I am a victor through Jesus Christ. Praise God. You don't let people dictate your forecast. You don't let critics display and dictate what your life is going to be. When you are down and under, that is all the more reason to praise him. Because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at the face of people who want to intimidate you. Intimidate your family, intimidate your church, uh, intimidate your fellowship, intimidate your unity, intimidate your harmony, and call it a bluff because you believe in Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. No man. Praise God, no matter how hard the enemy tries to pull you down, you believe in what he says. My word says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon. Praise God, whether it is literal weapons, whether it is verbal weapons, whether it is plots and plans and schemes of the enemy. My Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that riseth against you, thou shalt condemn it. For this is the heritage of the servants of God. This is by my righteousness saved. Not CNN, Saith, not Fox News, uh, says uh, not Channel 7, Saith, the Lord of hosts. He has the final word. Ah, praise God. Churches across the world are being intimidated. Praise God. If you go to India, the churches are being intimidated. They are being persecuted. All over the world, you see, there are news coming out that tends to paint a gloomy picture for the church. I got news for you. Eat your heart out. 
This is what Jesus said. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Ah, you know, when he's building his church, I want to be on his side. I want to be on the building side. I want to be on the heaven side. I want to be on the builder's side because he said, I will build my church. It's not no pastor's church. It's not no elder's church. This is his church. If it is his church, he says, I will build it. And he has already given the forecast. You know what it is? It says, the gates of hell shall not. I don't want to be caught on the wrong side. Praise God. Not with my words, not with my thoughts, not with my activities, not with my plannings, not with my schemings. Because if I am caught on the wrong side, it's guaranteed that you will fail because he has already pronounced the victory. Praise God. I will continue with the message. Let my joy remain in you so that your joy may be full. Praise God. If my joy has to be full, it has to be connected to him. He's the source of everything. All eyes closed. Father, we thank you and we praise you. Thank you, Father. Praise God. Is there anybody in the house? Who's going through crisis mode. You are going through a critical season in your life. You see pressure building on the inside. And the pressure building on the outside. You see a bleak future. A bleak forecast for you, for your family. Praise God. Intimidated. Threatened. Fearful. Praise God. Ah, let me ask you. Would you stay connected to him? He will bring you out. Is there anybody in the house who would say. Pastor that's me. I need prayer. You stand up wherever you are. We're going to pray with you. Wherever you are just stand up. Praise God. He wants you to experience joy in the fullest. In every season of your life. He does not want you to be a thermometer Christian. He wants you to be a thermostat Christian. The one that brings change around. Would you say, Pastor, I want to be that person who brings joy around. Praise God. I want to be the person who brings contagious joy around me. I want the joy that is within me not to be tempered, not to be confined. I want it to bubble and flow and be full and to be overflowing every season of my life. Even now as I go through crisis mode. Praise God. If you are that person, you rise on your feet. We'll pray for you. All I closed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for your goodness and we thank you for your tender mercies. Lord, as we go about with our lives, we pray that the joy in us will continue to overflow. That we will not be still and confined, but we will overflow with joy. We pray that our joy source will be you, our relationship with you, our communion with you, and we will experience the fullness that your word says. Send us home with your grace and your blessings. We commit the young and the old alike into your hands. Mold, make, mend. We pray that you would speak life into each and every one of us. To Christ be the glory. Let none fall or falter. Sustain everyone in grace. 
May we go from victory to victory, from grace to grace, from glory to glory, from power to power, till we all reach the destiny that you have marked out for us. Thank you, Jesus. Unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceedingly great joy. To him be glory, honor, majesty, both now and forevermore. And God's people said, Amen. Praise God. Before we give the benediction, please be seated. We have one announcement.